All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Shooting Lights Out as y'all can swap. That is all the show that you can follow from the Playmaker of the Network as including the Shooting Lights Out that is here right now. Uh, Arch Rivals Football is also another show that we do that's under the Playmaker of the Ball, also with the Pain Train Pipe Bomb Productions, as well as Bearing Down Gridiron. And you have really Talk that I host. You also have the stuff my man, Alex Lagazar, does. Cowboys talk, race quit, uh, ringside chaos, ranking around a diamond, internet LC. So there's a lot of there's a lot of content under the playmakers bar that no matter what sport you love, we got you covered. Now, for those of you who are sitting here and you're looking at it, you see a Florida State logo on there. And you're asking yourself, why do you see a Florida State logo on there? Because my flagrant foul today comes to you by the way of the Florida State. Seminoles, you know. Now, why is it that we are doing Florida State Seminoles here? You know, because we're gonna get into it in a minute, and I want I want you to know that hey, I pay attention. Now, the funny thing is, the football team has done well. They have done great. They are ranked in a they are ranked in a college football playoff ranking. The ladies' basketball team they are off to eleven and two start. Somehow, the men who you was the dominant ones. For the past years, since Leonard Hamilton has taken over the program, this, however, is what has been going on with the Florida State Seminoles. As you can see here, they are three and ten on the season, ranked ninth in the ACC. With their next game coming up tomorrow at eight thirty against Notre Dame, we'll get to that in a minute. But three and ten. Is Leonard Hamilton in a Florida State Seminole men's basketball team? Now, now, as a Gator fan that I am, I should be thrilled. I should be happy, and I am, to be honest. But yet, I have a job to do. So I have to call out the teams that need to be called out. The only two teams in the Power Five that's really worse than you guys is the Louisville Cardinals, who you beat, by the way. And I'll show you, and I'll be showing the people when you beat them. And the team that hasn't won a goddamn game yet in the California Golden Bears, who I did a play and foul on last Monday. Okay. But this is the Florida State Summers we're talking about here. You open the season on November 7th against Stinson, and they walked into Tallahassee and beat you 83 to 74. Wow. Yeah, that's part of one of the stunners that I went out of my opening of my opening show when I, when I did shooting lights out for college basketball. And then you take the trip to UCF and you get beat 68 to 54. Okay. You come back home and you face Troy. And Troy beats you 79 to 72. You're 0 and 3 out the gate and you lost to mid major teams already. And then you add UCF in the middle. Then you have the the Sunshine, the Sunshine Showdown with the Florida State Gators, with my Florida Gators. In Tallahassee, and you had a 17 point lead, and you saw the Gators come back and beat you 76 to 67. You had a 17 point lead, and you lost by nine. That is a 26 point turnaround from my Gators to do that in Tallahassee. Prior to the week before, we faced off in football, and y'all snuck out of that one. You get your first win. November 21st against Mercer when you win 81 to 72. After that, you go to Siena for Thanksgiving and you get blasted. 80 to 63. What, who is Siena? I've never heard of Siena. I don't even know what Siena is located, at, to be honest. Matter of fact, I'm going to look it up right now. Siena. I just want to know what it is because I'm confused right now. The Siena Saints is what they are called. They are, they are a Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference team, the MAAC Conference. That's another mid-major team that beat Florida State. They are located in Lauderville, New York. So that is Stinson, Troy, Siena. That is three mid major teams that beat you. Then you took your butt over to Stanford, who was not having a good season whatsoever. You can, you can look at the practice and you can tell. But they beat you by 10, 70 to 60. 
that's the that's the month of November. So let me go back. So in the month of November, oh, we ain't even done yet. So right now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're one and six already. And then we go, we gonna keep it going. You go to Nebraska, and Nebraska beat you on November 27th. 75 to 58. You didn't even have a chance in hell. And then in the final ACC Big Ten challenge that will be taking place, as those of you who've been watching, you know I covered that one in some in the previous episode. Number five, Purdue comes in and they dominate you 79 to 69. You're one in eight. And then you kicked off SEC play with number three Virginia at the time at Virginia. We knew that was a loss, but you played it. You showed up and played. You you lost by you lost by five, 62 to 57, but you won in nine. Of course, you played Louisville, who is the sorriest team in the ACC there is. That's the second sorriest team in college basketball as of right now when, when it comes to mid, when it comes to major teams. You beat them and you blew them out 75 to 53. That's your second win. And that was at home. You stayed home and you get to play South Carolina Upstate and you beat them 80 to 63. So you're three and nine. And then uh, just a few days ago on December 17th, you played St. John's, Red Stone, not the ladies, but the men. And they beat you 93 to 79, which puts you at the record of 10 and three. Leonard Hamilton has been coaching the Florida State men's basketball team for 20 years. This is the worst start I have ever seen Leonard Hampton have at Florida State. And I've been looking forward to Florida State having a lot of bad seasons. Not under Leonard Hamilton. But this is what we get right here, right now. Yeah, three and ten. Okay. And since you're three and ten, this is what it looks like. You're averaging 68.4 points per game, but you're giving up 73.3 points per game. That is five point difference. You're shooting 42.1% from the field, but the opponents are shooting 42.7% from the field. That tells me they're getting up more shots than you are, and they're making more shots than you. You're shooting 34.8% from three. Your opponents are shooting 32.9% from the field. These numbers are not really big difference, but yet you're three and ten. Wow, the opponents are shooting, what, 0.6 better than you? Three-point range. You're shooting better. You're shooting two, like 1.9% better from three-point range than the, than the opponents. But you're three and ten. You're three and ten. Somebody explain this to me. Free throw shooting. Wow, 72.4 to 72.5. Somebody explain this to me. And Dorian Green, a junior, leading no charge for the Florida State Summers, is averaging 14 points a game, two assists a game, and 3.2 rebounds a game. Then another person who's Matthew Cleveland, 13 points per game with one assist, six rebounds a game. And then you have Caleb Mills, 12 points a game, giving you three assists a game and two rebounds a game. These are not terrible numbers. If you go look at my my other flagrant, my last flagrant file on the California Golden Bears, there's a reason why they are they haven't won a game. They are winless, and you see the numbers. The numbers back it up. The numbers that you just saw from Florida State. Let's go back to it. These numbers here are not different. How are you three and ten? This is what I'm trying to figure out. What makes you three and ten? The opponents barely shoot better than you, if not equal. They barely shoot better. They y'all equal in free throws, and you them, and you outshoot them in three point range. But how is you three and ten? I don't understand. I don't understand. Maybe, maybe these next few games y'all can get it together. Because then again, maybe not. Because when I mean, you look at it, this is a tough matchup. Tomorrow you play as we saw earlier. You got Florida State. You got Notre Dame coming in. That's at eight thirty on the ACC network. After that. You got a whole 10 days off because you play on New Year's Eve. And on New Year's Eve, you're going to Cameron Indoors against the 14 ranked Blue Devils. I might as well put you at at 3-11 and 11 right now because I don't see y'all going into Duke and beating Duke. I don't. I don't see it. You might be the, you might be Notre Dame. Notre Dame's been up and down too. But Duke, you ain't beating Duke. Then the surprise and start to kick your first game of the New Year's on the 7th. So you really have eight days off. 
before you play your next game. And that's at home against Georgia Tech. And Georgia Tech has been playing pretty good basketball lately, so I don't know. Then on the 11, you had Wake Forest. That's a tough one. Before you see Virginia again, this time at home, which I got a feeling you might lose that one again. Before you go to South Bend and meet Notre Dame for the second time, and you might lose that one. You might win the one at home, but you're going to lose at South Bend. Then you go to Pittsburgh on the 21st. Then you got a showdown with Miami who's going 22nd, and they are not playing no ball right now. They are. They Miami is for real. That's a L. Clemson comes in. Clemson has been playing some ball. That might be a L. I at least see what the, how many games you're talking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Even that's nine games, I already see at least three losses. No, I'll take that back. One, two, three, four. That's why I already see five losses at Duke, Virginia again, at Notre Dame, against Miami, and against Clemson. That's five losses right there. So if I'm already counting five losses, let's put you at 15 losses already and giving you four wins. That's seven and 15 on the season. If my prediction comes out the way, I'm looking at it right now. You split with Notre Dame. You lose to Duke. You probably get past Georgia Tech. Oh, no, you lose the working four. I'm thinking you lose. No, I'll take that back. You're going to lose that working four. I'll make that six. So you're six and like eight. You're six and 16. You're 10 games on the 500 if this comes out the way I think it is. I don't know what's going on, but Leonard Hamilton, I'm just going to say, I'm going to need you to get it together. I'm going to need you to find a way to get this right. Even though I'm, even though I should enjoy this as a Gator fan, I have never seen an ever two Florida State team on the Lemon Hamilton this bad. And it's funny thing is, the numbers don't even show how bad. The numbers don't even show that y'all this bad. I don't know what it is. Somebody, somebody in Tyler has to tell me why the Florida State Seminoles are 3 and 10 and the numbers are not that dispersion apart between what how Florida State plays on offense and, and how opponents do against them. They should not be 3 and 10, but they're 3 and 10. I don't know. But Florida State, you're getting the flavor foul, okay? That's, that's all. I can't, I, I, I'm, I'm astonished by this, but you're getting the flavor foul. So with that being said,